Well, good afternoon and welcome to another teaching. It's a Friday afternoon here in Texas and uh, man, it's a good day to be loving on Jesus and spending time with Jesus. It is the, the true meaning of life is, is growing in our relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, and the greatest tool we have to help us to grow to know Jesus after the spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit who lives in us as Christians is the living word of God, is our Bible, okay? Nothing will help us to know Jesus more than spending time in the living word of God. And so, wow, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, today we're continuing in Romans 8, just uh, just overwhelming chapter. We're going to do verses, uh, Lord willing, 18 to... to uh, to 25, 24, 25. Um, and uh, wow, just, just, this can be some good stuff here. So it's just, uh, wow. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy, your favor, your goodness, and your grace on our lives. Father, we thank you for your love. We just thank you for your wonderful mercy and provision in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, we just thank you for Jesus our only Lord and Savior and Master and King. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming into this world for us, for living a perfect, righteous life on our behalf that, that we could never live, Lord. We thank you for dying a torturous death on our behalf that we should have died, that we deserve to die. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you are alive and risen today. And we worship you today, our risen Savior, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to lead us and guide us now as we open your word. We ask you to give us eyes that see, ears that hear. We ask you to give us hearts that understand. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, Romans 8, and uh, I'm going to start in uh, 18, and uh, I'm going to go to 25. Paul speaking, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Wow. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just, all right. So let's lock it in now. Okay. Cause it's, you know, again, these are profound verses. It's deep. It's a little bit hard to understand. So we're going to unpack it here verse by verse. I'm going to go back and read verse 17. Okay. Romans eight seventeen says, now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. And so as we said at the end of the last teaching, uh, suffering is a part of humanity. Okay, Everyday suffering and difficulties are part of every human being's life. Every one of us throughout our lives, you know, experiences uh consistently various forms of trials and difficulties and sufferings and hardships and hurts and pains. I mean, we experience them physically. We, we experience them emotionally. Often we can experience them financially. Um, we, certain experience, we certainly experience them relationally in our relationships. We have trials and difficulties and sufferings. And, and all of this is a part of living in a fallen and sinful world, okay? Um, and none of us escape that. Now, the difference is 
unbelievers, people who have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they too have to experience all the sufferings of a, you know, of a, of a, of a fallen and sinful world. But, but they don't have the hope of, of glory. They don't have that to look forward to after this life. Only those who have genuinely received, who are currently trusting in Jesus Christ alone, for the forgiveness of their sins, the salvation of their soul, deliverance from eternal hell, and to go to heaven when they die. Only those people who are genuine Christians have the hope of glory and can look forward to a time of, of, of just of tremendous peace and contentment in joy and wonder and uh, and just overwhelming just beauty and uh and just the excitement of, of, of spending eternity in heaven, right? But Paul says they go hand in hand, right? We're children, we're heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, verse 17, in order that we may also share in his glory. So how, how our heavenly father has set this up is that, is that there's this balance. And as I said last time, it's you know, it's embarrassing for me to admit this, but it's like I live my life so often, right, Matt? I live my life consistently, Nathan, where I, I want, I want to share in the glory. I want the glory and the glories of eternal life. I want to enjoy them now because they are available now and certainly in the next life. But but I really don't want the sufferings, right? Although I understand that this says that they go hand in hand. And so our heavenly father has appointed just a, a level of difficulty and hardship and suffering in this life, even as Christ went through hardships and difficulties and sufferings, um, that that's a part of the Christian life. OK, um, and so, Father, I, again, I ask you to forgive me and, uh, and help us, Father, to understand that when you allow us to to go through sufferings, when you appoint us different hardships or difficulties or sufferings, help us to understand, Father, it is that that they are a part of us sharing in the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as your children. Wow. Wow. But look at what Paul says regarding these sufferings. Verse 18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory of that will be revealed in us. So again, all humanity, right, Corinne, goes through different forms of suffering and difficulty and hardship. And, and Paul certainly went through tremendous hardship. Now, we also, as Christians, go through the suffering of, of persecution, right? Um, in the West, we don't really get much persecution, but Christians over the, over the centuries, over the last 2,000 years, have endured horrible persecutions and martyrdoms and mistreatments. But Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. When I read this, this verse and, you know, when y'all hear this verse, right, when you hear this, Lauren, right, and you think about the difficulties that the Lord has, has allowed in your life or he's appointed to you, right, uh, the different hardships, the frustrations, the, you know, all the things that go along with living in a fallen, sinful world. Okay, we live in a world that's sinful, falling, and dying. Everything dies. Okay, everything is decaying, as we're going to see here. The creation itself, right? The whole creation, the whole earth, um, you know, the, the trees, the grass, the animals, the plants, people, uh, everything is dying. Right. It's it's all decaying. The, the creation itself, everything, everything the father created was impacted when human beings brought sin into the world. But Paul says that whatever suffering we're dealing with now, he says it's not even worth comparing. And this is a, a, a really profound verse. It's not even worth comparing that that this verse ought to give us such tremendous encouragement that whatever we're going through, if you're in Jesus Christ today, it'll have been as if it's nothing compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. And yes, in us in this life, Pop, and in the next, May. 
Um, now, I want more of it in this life, and I certainly want it in the next, but but let's hold on to that as an encouragement, right, Chris? Let's really just hold on to the fact that our present sufferings, whatever they are, and again, um, some of us have been through tremendous sufferings, and you know we're all appointed different levels of sufferings at different times. Um, and, and again, if, if you're in a season of life now where everything's going well, well, thank you, Jesus. Right? It's, it seems like you know, again, those seasons aren't long before some form of difficulty comes, whether it's it's in a relationship or or losing a loved one. Um, a loved one passes away and, um, you know, or, or there's just some type of fracture and, you know, and, and just, uh, you know, some important friendships or relationships or, you know, we get betrayed in some way. Um, you know, we we don't feel well. We're sick. We, we get a bad diagnosis from the doctor. Um, you know, we just we have financial difficulties, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling, something breaks down in the house and, you know, we have physical pains in our body, you know, um, it's just it, it's a part of this existence. But the glory on the other side of it is so, so much greater that it's it's not to be compared. And again, that's hard to see, right? We were talking about it in Bible study, and uh, you know, um, you know, the guys were saying, you know, that it's it's hard because you know we we believe this by faith, right? But it's 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 not. We can't hold it, right? The situations or the sufferings in our lives are very tangible. Where the glory, we do experience His presence and His glory at a nominal level now, right? And as we grow to know Jesus more, um, you know, we'll experience that more and more in this life. But when we go to heaven, it'll be, it'll be full blown. It'll be absolute. It'll be as it'll be more real than our present sufferings are by a million. So, wow. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Look at verse nineteen. The creation waits. The creation, everything God created, right? The sky, the the heavens, the earth, um, the animals, like I said, the grass, the trees, um, the seas, the water, the lakes, um, just everything, all human beings. Um, the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Now, why? What does that mean? Now, when it says sons of God, it means sons and daughters here. Okay, it means children of God. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to re be revealed. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Wow. What does this mean, Susan? Okay. What is this saying here, Rap? Right? All right. So the creation was subjected to frustration, Becky, not by its own choice. The trees didn't do anything wrong. The animals, Stephen, didn't do anything wrong. The lakes, the streams, the beautiful flowers, they didn't do anything wrong. The earth didn't do anything wrong when Adam sinned. But our Heavenly Father made the choice to, when, when sin entered the world, God the Father subjected not only humanity to the consequences of sin and death, but all of creation as well. Right. All the trees and all the grass and all the animals and all the beautiful birds and, and butterflies and, 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 and all of it, all of creation was for the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice. It, it didn't choose to do it. It didn't make the mistake and fall into sin. And yet the creation has come under the same bondage that humanity has come under. That when Adam sinned, our Heavenly Father cursed the creation with that sin as well. It says the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. I mean, as of right now, okay, when we look around today, <clears throat> you know, Christians, 
are children of God our Father. It's one of the, the overwhelming blessings of becoming a Christian is God the Father actually becomes your heavenly Father. And for all eternity, God the Father is your, your heavenly Father, not only in this life, but in the next, right? Remember, we have a triune God, one being, right? Three separate individual distinct persons, right? One what, three who's, right? Um, <clears throat> God the Father, right? God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Um, and it says that the creation waits in eager expectation. The creation actually desires for us to be made distinctly known. We have spiritual life in us. We are sons and daughters of our heavenly father. But as of right now, when you look at humanity, we don't look any different on the outside. We all look the same, right? We all have human bodies that are, that are all dying, right? Every one of us is dying. It's just a matter of time. And, you know, uh, it hasn't, it, you know, it's not plainly revealed yet. Again, we have, and he's going to talk about, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have eternal life. But, but as of, as of right now, um, you know, right, Gabe, you know, we don't, you, you can't tell that we're any different. Okay. That, that as human beings, we all look the same. We all die. We all have, uh, you know, a sinful, dying, decaying body. But it says that the creation actually waits, it desires, waits in eager expectation that for that time when, when we will be revealed, when, when we get our new bodies, right? When not only do we have new spiritual life, new eternal life as we have now, but we actually have a new resurrected body and it's plain that we are God's children. How exciting that is. And it's actually the creation desires this. It yearns for it. For the creation, verse 20, was subjected to frustration. We talked about that. It was subjected to the consequences of Adam and Eve's sin, not by its own choice. It didn't sin, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. Right now, everything's decaying in this sinful world. Everything dies. Okay, again, we have spiritual life, eternal life in Jesus Christ, right, Rick? But, you know, ultimately our bodies are, de are dying. They're decaying, right? For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, God the Father, in hope. So there's this hope that it's not always going to be like this. It was never the intention of our Heavenly Father. Certainly he cursed creation, but it, it isn't going to stay this way. In hope that the creation itself, not only, not only us who are Christians will have eternal life and new resurrected bodies, but that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. Just like when we leave this body and we get a new resurrected eternal immortal body, right? <laughs> wow, Corinne, right? When we get an immortal body and we'll be liberated from the bondage of this decaying, dying body, the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. So everything will be made right. And man, come Lord Jesus. You know, the Bible ends in... Uh, <clears throat> In Revelation 22 with the Apostle John saying, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Man, do we want this day? Do we long for this day when, when no more will we live in a, a sinful world? No world will we live with a sinful nature that still pulls us to, 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 to desire, to, you know, to, to, uh, to have sinful desires and, to, and just to, to, to have to beat back selfishness and, and just the self-serving nature and this, this battle we live in when we're in this body. I mean, just imagining y'all when, uh, you know, May, sweetheart, like when we, that's my wife, May, but when we, when we leave this body, right? And, uh, you know, and then when Jesus returns and not only will we as God's children, those who have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, not, not only will we have resurrection life, but the entire creation, all the trees, all the earth, all the animals, all the brooks, all the streams, all the grass, everything will be liberated, right? It, it, it was not meant. It, it has hope. It says, wow. 
Um, it was subjected in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage of decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Just like we'll be free from this decay, the creation will be free. Isn't that something y'all looking forward to? Wow, Pop. Golly. That's good stuff, right, Alicia? Man. <clears throat> All right, 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. So now Paul, again, is going to use this analogy of childbirth, okay? We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Jesus used the analogy of childbirth. And so, um, I mean, again, when a when a mother is carrying a baby, there is suffering and groaning, you know, uh, and there are pains that, that go through the childbirth, uh, the whole process, right? Um, personally, never having experienced it, okay? But, you know, just, you know, just having heard about it, it just uh, it looks painful, right? But Paul says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the, cha cha as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. The, <clears throat> the, 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 the creation is groaning for the new birth, for uh, a restored creation, right? It's groaning as in the pains of childbirth. And, and once the baby is born, obviously the baby and its mother that was just in tremendous pain now has immense an overwhelming joy, right? Veronica just has tremendous joy when you hold that baby, right, Susan? Golly. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. It's been groaning from the time Adam sinned up to, you know, thousands and thousands of years later, right up till now, it's still groaning, looking for that newness of life, that resurrection life, just like when the life comes out of the mother, when a, when a child is born physically in this world, the creation is even groaning and desiring to have a resurrection life that, that it will experience, even as we as sons and daughters of, as of our heavenly father will experience. Wow. Verse 23, not only so, now look at this, 23, not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Very powerful verse. Let me read it again. Not only so. So not only is the creation longing for resurrection life and to be through with this decaying, sinful, dying right world around us where everything dies. Not only so, but we ourselves, if you're in Jesus Christ today, and again, uh, the extent to which we experience this is, is different depending on how closely we walk with Christ and, you know, and our devotion, but there ought to be a longing in you. You ought to recognize and be, a, uh, there ought to be this longing for, for when, you know, when you're going to get your resurrected body. Think about having an immortal body that can never get sick, Right? And you're in the presence of Jesus and you're with your, your heavenly father, right? Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit. What does that mean? Well, right now, as Christians, we have already been given the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus is one with our spirit. The Holy Spirit has given us eternal life spiritual life, resurrection life, spiritually right now, okay? We already have that as Christians, and we experience relationship with God our Father and with Jesus Christ our Lord and with the Holy Spirit now, spiritually, we already have that relationship, and we already experience spiritual life. But not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we've already already been given that Spirit as a deposit, grown inwardly. We should You should have this desire, this inward desire, and where you're really looking forward to, to the next life and to the eternal life, right? And, and, and getting your resurrection body. Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. We're already children of God. But when we leave this life, when we get our resurrected body, we'll actually be in the presence 
of our heavenly father and our adoption will be completed, so to speak. Again, we're already full-blown sons and daughters, but when we get our, our resurrection bodies, right, the redemption of our bodies, when this, this, this old, sinful, decaying body is put aside and we get a new, immortal, resurrection, you know, spiritual body, right? Again, it will be a new, tangible body that's immortal. Wow. Um, at that point, it'll, our adoption will be complete, right? And that ought to be something that we groan for. I mean, do you look forward to that day? I, I wish Jesus would come back. This teaching is going to be done in about five minutes. And Lord Jesus, if you could come back before that time, I'd appreciate it. I really would. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. I mean, how nice it'll be when Jesus returns, right? And and just 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 the ridiculousness and absurdity you know, of the world we live in, again, this, this sinful, decaying world, the, the frivolity of civilization, you know, all the sin. When, when our king comes, he will restore it all. And that ought to be a, a desire. And not only that, yet you'll be able to be with him and you'll have, you'll be in the presence of your heavenly father. Wow. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. If you would say, you know, I don't experience that, then ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me. Pray, simply pray, right, Lauren? Holy Spirit, help me. I want to, to more desire my adoption as a son and daughter of, of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as, as a son of our heavenly Father. Wow, the redemption of our bodies. Look at verse 24. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? What does he mean by this? For in this hope, we were saved. You got saved, right? When you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you, you were desiring resurrection life. You were desiring eternal life, right? So in this hope of resurrection, in this hope of being adopted, in this hope of going to heaven when you die and being with your heavenly father, that this hope of resurrection, this hope of eternal life is, is what you were looking for when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, right? You were looking for resurrection life. For in this hope, we were saved, right? This is how we were saved is, this, is trusting in Jesus for eternal life, for resurrection life, and to go to heaven and be delivered from eternal hell and from sin. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? We don't have it right now, okay? What we have now is, again, we have spiritual life as Christians, right? But, you know, it's still, we're experiencing it in this world and in this body that is, that is dying, right? But we hope for what we don't yet have, right? But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? Verse 25, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Okay, so there it is. We should eagerly desire, right, the redemption of our bodies. We should eagerly desire resurrection life. But as long as the Lord tarries or leaves us in this life, we patiently press on. We continue to serve Jesus until he comes to get us, until he returns to restore everything, until he calls us home through natural death. We can never die spiritually. The, the moment you close your eyes on this earth, the moment you take your last breath on earth, you will be immediately ushered into eternity, into the presence of our Savior, of our Master, of our King. You'll see Jesus. And no more will you be hoping you will have it. You'll have your full adoption. Again, you already have your adoption spiritually if you're in Christ, but you'll have your full adoption, your resurrected body, and you'll be in heaven and in eternity forever and ever and ever. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And that ought to be the pattern of our lives is we are still eagerly waiting for it but we're patiently walking with Jesus, looking to use our time, talents, and treasure, right, Nathan, and, and the advancement of the gospel, looking forward to the day that Jesus comes to get us or he takes us home in death. 
Wow, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy, your favor, your goodness, and your grace on our lives. We thank you, Lord, just for this, this, these incredible revelations, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have the first fruits of the Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you live in us. And we do groan inwardly and we do desire our resurrected bodies. Wow. Jesus, we worship you. Father, we love you. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We thank you. We praise you. And we ask you to seal this message to our hearts now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.